Hello everyone. So now we are going to talk about the magnetic field produced along the axis of a circular coil. It's very easy. Okay. So and what about the straight current carrying conductor which is not there for CBSE exam. I mean the qualitative only is there. Quantitative is not there. I mean the derivation is not there. But here the derivation is there. This derivation is very easy. Very easy. Like you can easily understand this and you can get it. What is that? So let's say there is a current carrying conductor. So circular conductor and you you have to understand one fact that like this could be like this also Okay, it doesn't need to be like it doesn't need to be like okay So it is it is actually vertically sir is kept I mean sir kept vertically so it has to be vertical No, it could be what horizontal as well like it can be like this Okay, so now look at this. So here you are considering a small current element ideal and you are going to find out the magnetic field at this point P. So let's say this is the distance. And here they have given that is the radius is R. Okay, let's say radius is R. And this distance is given X. I would like to make it X. So they, they consider it as Z because it's like Z direction. They consider X, Y and Z. Okay, so now I consider this as X. And what about this? This is root of X square plus R square. I hope it is very clear. So this is the idea of a magnetic field produced by a current carrying conductor, circular conductor. So now how do we find out the magnet, I mean the magnetic field, it's very easy. You can see that this current element will produce what a magnetic field here, which is in the direction DB, you can see that. So here this one also will produce DB. So actually they are perpendicular because we all, we are very clear about uh, from, from by itself law, we know that. So how much is db? db is equal to mu naught by 4 pi i into dl cross r divided by, I would make it like this, divided by, so dl cross r divided by r cube, r cube, okay. So if it is r cap, then it will be r square. You know that very well. So the thing is, uh, the thing is in this case, so here you know that it, it has to be, the magnetic field has to be perpendicular to dl and r. So that's why it will be perpendicular and that perpendicular thing which is making an angle theta with this. So you can see that if this is theta 90 minus theta and this will be theta. So it is it is perpendicular. It's out of the plane just like out of the plane. That's that's what you have to remember always. So anyways this db you can actually divide or you can resolve into two that is db sine theta and db cos theta so basically we cannot show that over here look at this if i if i show it here it will be too much congested so that's why I made it like a separate one that db the entire db see this is the db one this is db and this is like theta and here also db is there and that is also making an angle theta. So both dBs are actually making dB cos theta along this direction, dB sin theta in the opposite direction. So they will get cancel each other. Okay, so this is the idea. So what will be the net value? The net value will be, the net value will be integral dB cos theta. So the full circle you have to integrate provided it will be integral dB cos theta. So this is what is the equation and what is db? So we know very well what is db. So that is equal to mu naught i divided by 4 pi into i dl sine theta. Like let me call it as sine theta or I call it as sine alpha. Okay, sine alpha divided by r square into cos theta. So here one thing it is very clear. So you see that you see very well that is here what is the sine alpha? Sin alpha is basically the angle between dl and r. So angle between dl and r is actually the alpha is equal to 90 degree. 90 degree. So how do, how do we explain that? So let's say there is a round here. So this is the this is the diagram. Okay, this is the diagram. And here you can see that the angle between this is r and this is the dl. What is the angle between them? It's actually 90 degree. So that's why it is not a problem that is it is always 90 degree basically that 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 particular dl and r you always remember d angle between dl and r so this theta is not that theta is actually basically this is theta that is not the th that is not the angle which we are talking right now alpha is basically the angle between dl and r that will be the element here and dl so it will be this angle how much is that 90 degree so 
then that part has been sorted so i can write it is equal to mu naught so integral sign i did not forget so integral sign is already there so mu naught by 4 pi i into look at this oh already i i added here so why would i uh, write i again okay let let me write it so i into so you can see that dl so in the dl and cos theta what is cos theta basically you can see that from this cos theta is very clear so that is adjacent side divided by hypotenuse that is theta divided by yeah so sorry r capital r divided by you can see root of r square plus x square i put x square you can put z square also i don't mind so r square divided by into r, root of r square plus x square into so what is what is this here already there dl is there so dl divided by integral dl divided by already r square is there what is r square it is basically r square plus x square that's it because a, a small r is basically r square plus x square the whole rest one by two the whole square so it will be r square plus x square so finally we are here so what is that mu naught i divided by 4 pi into look at this look at this r divided by r square plus x square root this is 1 by 2 1 by 2 plus 1 3 by 2 so into all raised to 3 by 2 okay into dl integral dl so i can write what is integral dl the full circle the full circle you have to consider so it would be b is equal to look at this mu naught i divided by 4 pi into so r divided by r square plus x square the whole ratio 3 by 2 into 2 pi r so here 2 pi 4 pi got cancelled only 2 will be there so the answer is b is equal to mu naught i into r square divided by 2 into r square plus x square the whole raised to 3 by 2 super that is the that is the final answer that we have okay that is the final idea that we have so now again again one more thing is that so there will be a question that is like what is the value at the center so you can look at this if you make this point p at the center which means the x value is zero the x value is zero so i can make it up i can make it as b is equal to mu naught i into r square divided by 2 into x is 0 you put x is equal to 0 so it will be r square the whole raised to 3 by 2 which is r cube so square cube got cancelled so b is equal to mu naught i divided by 2 r that's the final if n number of turns are there then what is the value of b b is equal to mu naught i divided by n into 2 r so i always tell my students one thing that you always keep in your mind suppose there is an infinitely long current carrying conductor infinitely long so at, at this point you have to find out the magnetic field what is the value the value is mu naught i divided by 2 pi r there is a circular current carrying conductor it's not a circle why is this app is doing this thing okay fine so look at this so there is a circular current carrying conductor and you want to find out the magnetic field at the center what is the magnetic field at the center mu naught i divided by 2 r 2 r so here this is r okay so what does that mean it means here like something which is in circle it doesn't have pi something which is like a straight line it has pi in the equation so like that you can remember just opposite something which is like circle there is no pi but something which is a straight line there is pi okay i hope you understood that so this is the derivation part and you have to explain it very clearly very factively you have to explain and all the points you have to write make sure that this alpha where is this alpha gone or sine alpha separately a sine theta if you are considering sine I, I considered alpha but anyways some books they have given theta itself so then you have to always remember that is going to be one okay how do you remember that if it is not one then our our derivation will not go forward so always you remember in that way okay so that's it okay we'll see in the next one thank you